Microsoft appears to be going nuclear. Tech giant Microsoft wants to use nuclear power from Three Mile Island to supply its artificial intelligence data center. As demand for energy is exploding, in part due to AI. Researchers estimate data centers could consume 9% of all U.S. electricity by 2030. I have to be honest and say the meltdown, of course, is the first thing that I think of. It was a weird time. Um, we're at the basketball court shooting hoops, watching people drive out of town with napkins over their faces and that kind of thing. I'm here on a beautiful day in Pennsylvania for a unique opportunity. The opportunity to see a nuclear phoenix rise from the ashes. This is Three Mile Island home of America's worst nuclear disaster. It ceased operations in 2019, but today it's set to come back online in 2028 to exclusively provide power to tech giant Microsoft. How did we get here? And what does it mean for the future of nuclear power in the United States? My visit to Three Mile Island, or TMI, which just happens to be enough information, is timed with the news that Microsoft has agreed to buy energy from the power plant for the next 20 years. Microsoft was the first mega corporation to make mega nuclear news in 2024, followed by Amazon, Meta, and Google. To me, it signaled the start of some kind of sea change, at least in the United States. All of a sudden, big nuclear was back in a big way. The industry has been hoping for something like this for a long time, so the December of 2024 was the perfect time for me to finally visit the plant, get in on the ground floor of this apparent radioactive revolution, and complete my Big 3 nuclear disaster bucket list. It's very possible that our team is the first non-traditional media company to be invited inside Chernobyl, Fukushima, and now Three Mile Island to discover and document. I feel extremely fortunate that we've been able to bring you these stories. But of course, I've had help. For the sake of transparency, Constellation, the company that operates TMI Unit 1 and the leading nuclear power plant operator in the United States, is the sponsor of today's video. You should also know that I've agreed not to say or show certain things that could compromise plant security. Showing video of security checkpoints and the like would obviously be bad. Still, the framing of this piece and the opinions herein are entirely my own. Want to see? Why else would I be showing you an anime demon core girl right now? For no reason. Just because I can. Okay. Earlier in this video, I said America's worst nuclear disaster in quotation marks because here, within a stone's throw of Three Mile Island, unlike Fukushima, unlike Chernobyl, there is nothing above normal background radiation. This is entirely unsurprising, of course, when you know what actually happened here. In the March of 1979, Reactor Unit 2 of the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania, thanks to a concatenation of human and design errors, experienced a partial meltdown. Solid uranium fuel in the core turned to liquid and fission products boiled out. The plant operators decided to vent some of this radioactive gas into the environment. This, combined with fear of a potential explosion, led to mass evacuations of the surrounding area. The fear associated with those evacuations lives on in Pennsylvania to this day. The radioactive gas does not. Fukushima and Chernobyl are contaminated with mainly cesium-137, a fission product that boils out of a meltdown but becomes solid again and falls out to the ground, where it lives a half-life of 30 years or so. What was vented from TMI Unit 2 was radioactive krypton and xenon. Not only are these gases that stay in the air as gases, they quickly dilute themselves in the atmosphere. Both isotopes have half-lives that are much shorter than cesium and aren't readily incorporated into the body on account of the gases' nobility. So the accident at Three Mile Island Unit 2 was a disaster of a different kind, a communications disaster. There may be, there may be, there may be some safety problems, but to the best of our knowledge, there have been none identified with our kind of reactor to date. In my view, TMI shouldn't even be in the same sentence as Chernobyl or Fukushima, radiologically speaking. 
From a PR standpoint, however, the fallout in Pennsylvania was arguably as impactful as actual fallout. It's the reason why everyone knows the name of the plant. The still-functioning Reactor Unit 1 at TMI continued producing power all the way up until 2019, when it ceased operations for economic reasons. If you'd like to know more, you can watch our almost 40-minute video on TMI Unit 2, the accident, and its aftermath. But now, here at Three Mile Island, now the Crane Clean Energy Center, we see a flurry of activity. This might be the beginning of America's nuclear revolution. Dozens of operators and engineers are now inside TMI Unit 1, getting it ready to once again produce power. They are checking every valve, testing every seal. They are suiting back up to make the plant suitable. Just weeks after the Microsoft announcement in October 2024, Unit 1 has gone from looking like this to looking like this. Why restart an old nuclear power plant like this? Why bring in dozens and dozens of new operators to train for up to 18 months on decades old equipment? Well, if you want firm, clean energy, as companies like Microsoft, Google and now Meta do, it's been shown, economically speaking, that restarting an old nuclear power plant and or extending its life is the most economically efficient clean energy source that we have. One of the last real arguments against nuclear power is that it takes too long to build and it costs too much. While there is a kernel of truth to this, TMI Unit 1 is already built. That's a lot of savings over the cost of a new plant, and it's scheduled to be up and running again in just three years. Restarting and or extending the life of old nuclear power plants is therefore a much more cost competitive option. Combine this with the fact that operating NPPs don't emit carbon, and a born again Three Mile Island Unit 1 is actually one of the most economically advantageous sources of green energy there is. If you forget TMI Unit 2's infamous legacy for a moment, it makes total sense why mega corporations like Microsoft and others would be eyeing an option like this. It's relatively cheap, it's extremely powerful, and it meets your green goals. If you want more specifics, we also have a video digging deeper into the economics of nuclear power with help from Idaho National Laboratory. No matter what you may think about the complicated history of Three Mile Island Unit 2, the reality on the ground for a project like this is real, high-paying jobs for real people. And that makes a real difference. There's no negative connotation for you. For me, no. Uh, just a lot of excitement, looking for those good middle-class full-time jobs to come back at the plant, somewhere between six and 700 full-time employees with family-sustaining wages and benefits, and then the opportunity for the trades to go in once every two years and do refueling outages again. It'll be a nice economic hit for the area. Joe Gussler, and I'm the Apprentice Outreach Coordinator for the Pennsylvania Building Trades. You know, it was rough when they closed TMI Unit 1. Uh, affected a lot of households and small communities in the area. Middletown, um, Hummelstown, where Lower Dolphin School District is, Londonderry Township, right there where the plant was located. Uh, it was tough on a lot of folks. Uh, the, very few families weren't affected by it. To me, the economic end is huge because we feel that no matter what kind of power plant it is, we know that we can do the work safely and have that facility operate safely. Joe has good reason to be excited. According to a study by the Brattle Group, transforming TMI Unit 1 would create billions in tax revenue and GDP, as well as add thousands of jobs to Pennsylvania. And as a demonstration of a nuclear power plant's immense energy density, the study also estimates that bringing on just this one plant will effectively offset the emissions of a million vehicles every year for the next 20 years and provide enough energy to meet the entire state's growing demand for six years. I'm emphasizing these points because this is the potential of just a single nuclear reactor just this one large metal tube full of spicy rocks and you create thousands of jobs and power 800,000 homes. I absolutely understand lingering anti-nuclear sentiment from 1979, but for Joe and the skilled workers he represents, obvious economic advantages win out. You know, there are folks that have the anti-nuclear sentiment hard, always have since the accident, um, but I, I truly believe they're in the minority in a major way. Uh, 
I hear a lot of positive things, so. Why a company like Microsoft? And why nuclear energy in particular? Well, these companies are looking to run large data centers. And in particular, these data centers need firm, stable energy. As you can see, the environment is not always cooperative. It's not always sunny or windy. Other green sources of energy like wind and solar are good, but they're not exactly stable, at least not as stable as nuclear power is. So Microsoft, Google, and others are looking for green, stable energy. And right now, only nuclear power can provide that. This is most famously demonstrated by the so-called duck curve. Solar panels produce the majority of their energy during the day, when the demand for electricity is at its lowest. This slope can be softened by batteries and storage, but it's always going to be the case that sunlight will be variable. Nuclear power, on the other hand, is more or less constant, providing consistent levels of energy over 90% of the time. Nuclear, therefore, is one of the best ways to provide so-called base load energy the minimum amount of energy a power grid needs to meet consistent demand. And it does so better than wind and solar by smoothing out all those peaks and valleys of variance. Everyone's talking about clean energy, clean energy. To me, nuclear is clean energy, it's carbon free. Um, and we can't, we can't windmill and solar farm our way to the baseload energy that we need. So if people don't wanna have rolling brownouts and blackouts, uh, to me, the nuclear industry is very important. The nuclear industry probably has the worst PR of any industry ever. The accident at Three Mile Island Unit 2 has a lot to do with that. So it's not surprising that Constellation and Microsoft want to make another big change, the name. Going forward, Three Mile Island Unit 1 will be known as the Crane Clean Energy Center. No doubt the doubters will see this as hiding some sordid history, and they're not entirely wrong. But as I see it, it's a smart communication strategy. It's leaving behind baggage from half a century ago. What do you think of the rebranding to Crane Clean Energy? If, what better way to turn a page, you know, and uh, is to come up with a new name, because certainly there's no doubt um, you know, some historical residue from the words, you know, Three Mile Island, TMI, things of that nature. Um, it'd be great to kind of you know, have, have a fresh start new player uh, and kind of a new future for the facility. Constellation is trying to make good on this rebranding in the community, too. The company has already committed a million dollars of philanthropic work to the area, and it's not explicitly for marketing either. It's for book buses for kids. I mean, we're all about community, um, and it's a small community, and we all look out for each other. Um, and I think it's going to be a really good thing that they're going to be here um, with Constellation um, already you know making such an effort to be out in the community um, to create that goodwill that so that we want them to be here we want crane clean energy center to open um, i think is you know is brilliant on their part that they're they're doing such a hard push in the beginning before it's even going to be open for a few years to my eye constellation is doing everything right so far rebranding engaging the community and taking advantage of what is a unique situation not just for the United States, but for nuclear energy on the world stage. Turning a nuclear disaster back into a nuclear dynamo? That's unprecedented. We, we'd welcome uh, to be uh, a leader in that, in that sense. I think, again, we're doing it on the grid, which is different than some other places. Uh, we're doing it with a private investor with a pretty big name uh, in terms of Microsoft. And there's some history behind it, too. So I think there's a lot um, we can kind of set a bar. It's different than anything else that's happening out there. And we feel it's a positive story, right, uh, for, for this region. Um, totally acknowledge and understand, you know, apprehension. But Constellation has shown to be a really you know, a good you know, community actor in that sense. And we're, we're excited for the years ahead. Of course, there is the 800-pound data center in the room that we've been ignoring. Microsoft and other tech behemoths are looking to nuclear power specifically because it can provide consistent power to meet the tremendous demand of artificial intelligence. Why does AI need so much energy? ChatGPT, Midjourney, and other systems run basically like brains. Enormous neural networks processing lifetimes worth of information through billions and billions of silicon simulacrums. Your brain uses 20% of the calories that you intake. 
so it's not surprising that these artificial brains need a surprising amount of energy too. It seems like the proliferation of AI, at least right now, is inevitable, and the consequences of this new inflection point are unknown. But if there's anything unambiguously good here, it's that the corporations behind these technologies are all looking to get shocking amounts of electricity cleanly. They are all looking to nuclear, which more or less proves to me nuclear's enduring viability. It's very possible that Three Mile Island Unit 1's new legacy will be kicking off a revolution that the nuclear industry hasn't seen since the 50s. Microsoft, Google, Meta, and others have now all signed on to have nuclear power as a part of their futures, which more or less proves to me that this technology is a safe, green, viable way to get to those futures. I can say that I'm honestly surprised. Instead of waiting for the public and politicians to stop splitting hairs on nuclear power, nuclear safety, private companies have gone on ahead to split atoms. Until next time.